Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Zero Project Fireside Chat. And today we're gonna be talking about creating a global standard and certification for the hospitality and tourism industry. And with us we have the lovely Niha Arora of Planet Enabled. Would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you so much, Sharon. Uh, so I'm Neha Arora, and I'm the founder of Planet Abled, which makes travel accessible and inclusive for persons with uh, all types of disabilities and elderly. And I started this journey because both my parents are persons with disabilities, two different disabilities, and I wanted to travel <laughs> myself with them. And uh, that started the uh, journey of leaving my corporate career and uh, working on it. Wonderful. And can you tell us more about the global standards that Plan of the Able is creating and what sure. you're trying to do? Yes. So, um, see, the point of, we are not trying to create something new because we know that uh, there are standards that exist, there are laws that exist. What we are trying to do is create an ecosystem, a system or a framework wherein right from the point when a disabled person thinks of traveling, the thought that I want to travel somewhere comes into the mind, right? Until the point they come back from a nice holiday with happy memories. That is, that whole process is standardized, more intuitive and adapted, and they, they have the freedom of choice to uh, make informed decisions about where they want to travel, how they want to travel, and it's not full of hassles. Like It's like mainstreaming accessibility and inclusion into the sustainable tourism framework that the movement that is already going around around the world, right? We want to make accessibility and inclusion also as an integral part of it. So this, these global uh, standards are going to do exactly that. And why do we need to explore this? Isn't change already happening? Well, uh, unfortunately not. We have uh, like uh, the laws that exist in developed nations like US, UK, Europe. We have good disability laws. And then we have uh, the sustainable tourism uh, frameworks or standards that are being implemented. There is a movement towards responsible tourism. But accessibility and inclusion doesn't form a part of it. So like disability uh, is more like a silos that is existing in its own bubble. And it's not being mainstream for that matter. And when you, uh, like I as a, have been a practitioner as a travel service provider and destination developer for travelers with all types of disability on the ground. So I understand that the business have their own challenges of not being uh, implementing accessibility. But they also have a lot of misconception, misconceptions around that accessibility is only wheelchair access. And they think from a business, oh, we, we are losing one room because we are making one big room. And the, we ha held a stakeholder consultation yesterday right here during the course of the conference. And there were hotel chains and tourism boards and people with lived experience of various disabilities. And we identified there is a huge gap in the understanding, like what a business thinks accessibility and inclusion is. They, are, they think that they're doing the best. But the user the, who is experiencing those, they are realizing there is a huge gap and their needs are not being met. And hospitality is more human driven. Like when we are talking of laws which are focused on architecture or the infrastructure, built environment, digital accessibility and information or communication accessibility. But the human element of hospitality, that can it be intuitive? Like can the, uh, the staff at a hotel, uh, while they are asking which type of pillow are you wanting, they can also ask, what are your accessibility needs and how can I help you? And device solution, even if they are not uh, trained or well prepared to it, can still consider a disabled traveler or a guest as a human who is having any needs, just like any other traveler needs, rather than having a sympathetic attitude or thinking, will they be able to pay me? Because it's like a huge... Uh, business opportunity and uh, these uh, businesses have no idea how big that opportunity is so they they have their own prejudices around this market which is like almost half of the population um, if, when we include their friends and families of persons with disability so that is not being harnessed plus any of the laws or standards that exist globally are developed from the perspective of a developed nation 
So uh, the half of the population that lives in developing nations uh, in countries like India or China or Asia, their challenges there are totally different. There is a third world problem and then there's a first world problem. So that needs to be integrated too. So a global standard that keeps this in mind while, you know, it's harmonized globally and can be implemented anywhere across the world. It's intuitive and adapted to the needs of diverse needs of travelers with disabilities. Can you say a few more, more words about developing countries and, and the standard and what we were talking about just off, off the camera? Sure. <laughs> It's a really interesting topic, so just a few more words. Yeah, yeah, sure. So <coughs> see, when we talk of a developing nation, the laws are not implemented properly. I mean, even if on paper they might have a disability law in place, but the government is perhaps the first uh, uh, like entity in violation of it. Their own websites are not accessible. Their um, own infrastructure remains inaccessible. Then the human factor comes in that the people are nicer. Like, uh, for I'll give you a very uh, a simple example. We had at the G20 summit that the Israeli minister was stranded for two hours uh, and there was no accessible ramp for her to get inside. And uh, then she had to go away. In, in a country like India, the solution would have been done in 20 minutes. Because there is no, because someone would have just said, okay, <laughs> let's make something right away, right now. And, no one bothers about, like, they have to go through the cycle of bureaucracy or approvals or health and safety, right? So it, that is so not there. There's a plus and a minus, right? Yes. Yeah. So there is a plus and then there is a minus. So the ex this is a different kind of accessibility. Like, the, the challenge is the same, but the solutioning is different. And the, in terms of, uh, say, uh, convincing the businesses about the opportunity, if you go for, to a developed nation, they will see the data. They will believe the data. They will, oh, when you will tell them, oh, there is a 13.1 trillion uh, billion opportunity, uh, trillion opportunity lying there, and uh, they would believe you because they will believe the data. In India, no one would believe that. They will say, where is the money? Show me the money that comes into my bank account. So how do you convince them? So you just give them more business. So when I, I started the company as a service <laughs> provider, <coughs> sorry, bless you. So when I started the company as a service provider, no, no, none of the hotels listened to uh, me as an opportunity. You had to just train them, sensitize them, and send people to them. And when they realize, oh, they're spending more money on an average, oh, they are staying longer than an average other, like a non-disabled traveler, and they are repeat customers. Oh, now this is something. Makes I business need. sense. Yes, it now it makes business sense. So you need to create a user case to them that it is there. So even in the stakeholder consultation yesterday that we did, I mean, the users are saying, say, uh, for a wheelchair user, the cruises are a great way of going for a holiday because they're considered accessible. But a deaf person, like a hard of hearing person who was there, she said she find cruises completely inaccessible because... Uh, they say, get a hearing person with you because we cannot get into the hassle of communicating with you while you are staying on the cruise. Mm. So it becomes inaccessible for them. So, like, there are challenges, and there are different challenges for different types of users. And it's not just disability. It's like a human need. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, you might, have a, you might be vegan and you might have a, an, a food allergy or some sensory uh, uh, allergy for that matter. So that, need, that is a need that, you know, the hospitality industry caters to because they want your money. And th it's the same with the disabled customer as well. So the businesses have to look at, okay, uh, the, the, here is the money. So these consultations are actually a first step of, on getting both of them together and see, okay, hear each other out and see where the solution lies. So we have just a few more minutes left, but I really want to hear what the vision of Planet Abled is. So see, my vision is that uh, every, uh, like, it's more like from uh, being a stigma. Disability becomes a stigma for most businesses that they don't see it as an opportunity. They look at it, oh, uh, I did it something for this group of people under my uh, corporate social responsibility and stuff like that. So there is an attitudinal barrier there. I want to shift it towards an aspiration that, like, you know, uh, there's a Michelin star rating aspiration for restaurants. Mm -hmm. 
So I want the businesses to have that aspiration of how disabled friendly and inclusive we are, right? So there is already a movement going about around LGBTQ community because uh, they are mostly without kids, have a lot of money to spend. So the hospitality industry is after them to cater to their needs. I want the same to happen for uh, disabled travelers. And of course, there is intersectionality. You have uh, uh, a gay, disabled, black person, for that matter, who has a lot of money to spend. So that intersectionality also comes into the picture. So I want to make it, OK, we, they, they compete with each other. Oh, they are disabled friendly, this hotel next to me. I need to be disabled friendly too. And I need to compete for the business that they don't go to my competitor, they go to me. So that kind of competition needs to be created so that disability becomes sexy. Because until and unless you make it sexy, the, the businesses won't realize the business opportunity onto it and won't jump onto it. So that is my vision. And uh, to make every uh, travel company or um, uh, uh, cater to travelers with disabilities so that you don't need separate travel companies or separate marketplaces uh, for disabled travelers. It's just so that they have the information online in one place and they can make their own informed decisions about traveling. That's going to serve everyone. Not yes, everyone. Exactly. Wonderful. Any last words before we part? I think my last words is anyone who is uh, listening to it, uh, whether they are from the disability or accessibility community or whether they are like they haven't had any interaction with uh, uh, a disabled person for that matter, just treat them as humans and think of it that they, how can you best uh, uh, cater to their needs uh, as a business, right? Or how can you inculcate inclusion in your whole journey? Because it is much more cheaper, actually, if you think of it. Like uh, 10 to 12% people are wheelchair users out of the whole 100% of disabled people. The, for the solutioning for them is actually much more cheaper to integrate when you think of, oh, we have to make a double-sized room mm -hmm. for a wheelchair user. Start where you are. Okay, I, there are very amazing assistive technology solutions that are available that can be integrated into the traveler journey, the life cycle um, of uh, uh, the various types of travelers. And they're, not, they're very cheap and you can still harness the opportunity of getting the, uh, the money from disabled travelers and their families. So why are you leaving money on the table in the first place? I mean, that's my question. Show me and the money. <laughs> uh, look at the data. I mean, the, I think I missed mentioning that. Um, that data is important. And uh, uh, the existing laws and standards miss out on tracking the business data, like how much disabled people are tra uh, the spending per night. And uh, once we do that, I mean, with the standards, we also want to gather that data and present it. Not just as in terms of, I mean, I mean, I'm open to sharing bank accounts. Like, this is the money that came in, okay? This is how much uh, disabled travelers spent. It's not just uh, reporting data that they say they have the money. This is the bank account money. So you can have this money in your bank account too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and we're really lucky to have Petra do some graphic facilitation for us. Yeah, I love her. She's incredible. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> um, tourism industry, that's my former life. So I'm glad to be here. Um, yeah, we heard about uh, global standards that need to be developed in order to make sure that travel is inclusive for every kind of person. Um, and you also mentioned intersectionality. So diversity within the target group, mainly of course focused on diverse um, disabilities. So. At the end, you said start where you are. So if we look at the travel journey, we have a person who starts with, me with ideas, I want to travel, so we have to target already like booking platforms and so on. So we have to make sure we, we, we reach the person uh, with the disability. And then the travel itself is inclusive and all barrier free. We arrive at the receiving country or culture and that's where the point comes in why we need global standards, because the laws that are applicable in different countries are basically first world driven. 
But um, solutions are sometimes cultural based. And you brought this example of one country said, okay, now we cannot do this because the law doesn't ex like allow us to do it. And another country would have said, okay, let's find a solution. So there is a good and a bad in everything. And Planet Able is trying to bring these together so that on a global scope, a person with disability can choose his or her um, favorite way of traveling, uh, favorite destination, and travel like everybody else. Because on the long run, this is a cheaper solution for the industry when thinking of disabled people from the beginning. And uh, unfortunately, we still have big gaps between what the people need and what the tourism industry thinks they're doing. So there's a lot to do. But you know that there is data showing us that uh, integrating people with disabilities as a target group is a real business opportunity. And with that vision, I think change will happen. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you in a few minutes for the next fireside chat. Thank you.